I wanted to make money. So I wasn't going to be a designer. I was going to work in business, particularly finance, where I would be very important. Um, I would wear like a pencil skirt suit every day with a briefcase. And I would work in a tall building with all these like important men and I would tell them what to do. And that was my goal. I had always loved, you know, being creative and I was sort of creatively inclined. Um, so one day I just decided that I was gonna go back to school for interior architecture and um, quit my job and I was gonna bartend at night. And so I did, and here I am. <laughs> I was a terrible bartender they would like I was the worst bartender ever because I'm really chatty and I like to talk to people and so um I'm a, a ranch water girl which is like tequila soda and lime juice so like if you ask for that I can make that for you um but no I worked at this bar where it was like kind of a college bar so they had these buckets with like sharks and I mean it was awful it was really awful and so they would often make me like the wristband girl instead or the keg girl where it was like very simple and I couldn't mess things up um or it'd have me like hand out flyers because I was like real personable. So I was definitely the world's worst bartender. I'm definitely more of um, a drinker than a bartender. Because of my financial and business background, I speak budgets, I speak investment, I speak to the people who are less creatively inclined, and I can do that. It's not my favorite part of my job, but I can do that, and I choose to do it in the beginning. So we have a really strict minimum that we set, and um, people know at the very beginning exactly how much the process is gonna cost. We give them estimates, we give them budgets, we give them spreadsheets. I print out reports from past projects with the same square footages so they can see what other people have spent in their neighborhood. I think getting those really hard conversations out of the way at the beginning of the project, it just alleviates so much tension and then it allows you to really enjoy the creative process and select items that you know are going to be approved because they meet these parameters. So I think, you know, a lot of designers shy away from money talk and it's hard, right? And if you don't have a financial background, it is a little harder. But I think even if you're, you know, you're you're just doing it on your own in an Excel spreadsheet and you're just giving some suggestions, I think people want you to be a good steward of their money and their investment as a designer. They don't want you to be like, oh, I forgot you owe me $800,000. So I think they're much more inclined to spend more and to trust you. And then once you earn that level of trust, a lot of times our clients are like, just run with it. Just go. We, we've got the budget. I'm not going to nickel and dime you. I'm good to go. I, you know what you're doing. My dream client is like anyone who just gets the process. And we're so lucky because we have like two or three of them right now. And um, I would say there are people that understand and trust you from the beginning they approve the budget and then they go away and they let you do your best work and i will say without a doubt i've said this a million times those are the best projects if people say to you you know we've spent some time together we've really downloaded all this information we've looked at your pinterest boards we've we've done all of these things together you've learned about our family you've come to our current home and we've talked numbers now go and then like four months later, we open the door. I mean, obviously we show them the presentation, but they don't nitpick. They're not like, what's that? And is that is that gonna be the well not Like, just let us do our thing. So those people are always the happiest and it always just feels so much more elevated and interesting. And they always say to me, I never would have picked that art piece. I cannot believe that that looks so good there. If you would have shown that to me, I would have told you no. So I think a lot of times if you can get people out of their own head and let them let you work some magic, um, great things really can happen. I am the lover of all things vintage, as you can see behind me, um, you know, my hat. I mean, I love, you know, and I'm not a hippie or anything, like it's not a reduce, reuse, recycle, although that's good, you should do that. Um, I think it's more to me about the designs having personality and just feeling collected and curated and thoughtful. And I think sometimes when people are decorating, um, it looks decorated. 
And I never want our designs to come off as that someone came in and like decorated where the pillows match the drapes, match the rug, match the, you know, everything. So it's important to me that it looks, our designs look like our clients really spent a long time and thoughtful process, uh, really like curating everything. As a working mom, I'm a working mom, I'm a working wife, I'm a working woman. Um, you know, balancing everything is hard. And so I think people, we, we make it look easy on Instagram and, and social media and in press. And I think something that people wouldn't know about me is that like mothering doesn't come easy to me. Being maternal is not something that has, I've always dreamed of. I always dreamed of being a business lady. Right. And so I think running a business and being a boss and being a designer and being a business lady is so easier, so much easier for me than going home and being nurturing and mothering and and these things that I have to work a little bit harder at because they're not inherent qualities I think that I was like excited about or born with when I was younger. Being a mother is definitely one of my like biggest joys now that I've learned, you know, the process and the challenges. But I will say I was very scared to do that. And I was like, oh my God, I did this is I didn't dream of like being someone's mom all my life. I was on an MTV dating show when I was in college. So that's always like a good one. I feel like that's like my party trick when people want to know something weird about me. And I won the dating show, by the way. Um, it was called Dismissed. And I tried to find the clip, but I don't, it's not online anymore. So sorry. Otherwise I'd put it on my Instagram.